Hi, this is David McCam for Elementor 360. Welcome to another 360 tutorial. In this video, I want to take a look at extending Elementor Pro Forms with a dynamic content for Elementor add-on. The Pro version of Elementor comes with a form builder. It's great for creating basic contact forms or when creating a pop-up to capture emails for a newsletter. However, the form builder lacks some of the more advanced features that users often need. Fortunately, the dynamic content for Elementor add-on fills in the gaps with some powerful extensions. To follow along, you'll need Elementor Pro and the dynamic content for Elementor add-on. If you take a look at the dynamic content for Elementor website, you can see all of the features, widgets, and extensions that it adds. In this video, we're looking at the Elementor Pro form extension. We can see it adds the option for conditional display of fields, for dynamically sending emails, steps for forms, the ability to save form entries, to export data, to generate a PDF from the form entries, a message generator for custom messages, an amount field for calculated forms, and an enchant form or some stylish options for making your forms more attractive. In this tutorial, I want to use several of those features to solve some common problems. We will imagine that we work for a company that sells the awesome plugin. First, conditional fields. There's a free light version of our awesome plugin in the WordPress plugin directory and a premium version on the company's website. The first problem is that we're getting support requests for the free plugin being sent to the premium support team. We only want to show the forms to the pro customers. Then we'll look at dynamic email. The second problem is that customers are sending in not only support requests, but also accounting issues and sales questions. The support team is tired of dealing with those and we want to send the email messages to the correct department. Also, a few customers said they requested a refund within the first 30 days, but the accounting department doesn't have a copy of that. Up to now, all of the customer requests have been handled by an email form on the website. But to solve this third problem, we want to start saving the messages in the database. So there's a record. So those are the imaginary problems that we're going to solve in this tutorial. We'll also be using two free plugins available from the WordPress plugin directory. Custom Post Type UI is a plugin for creating custom post types. And Advanced Custom Fields, ACF, is a program for adding custom fields. We will use these to create a place to save the form entry. Dynamic Content for Elementor has great support for advanced custom fields, so this is a good chance to see how easy it is to use. I have a test site with several plugins installed. We have the free version of Elementor, and we have Elementor Pro. Since the Forms Builder is part of Elementor Pro, you will need Elementor Pro to follow along. I also have Dynamic Content for Elementor, which is the add-on that adds extensions to the forms. And then free from the WordPress plugin directory, we have Custom Post Type UI and Advanced Custom Fields. The first step is to create our custom post type. We'll go to the CPT UI menu and click on the Add Edit Post Types. And here we will give it a slug, that is the lowercase name for the database and we'll call it contact, plural, and the singular label. Now, there are a bunch of labels here that you can customize, or you can auto-populate the labels using this link here, but really the default labels are fine for most cases. So I'm going to ignore the labels, and now we're going to look at some of the settings. Most of these are fine for our use case just as they are, but there are a few things that I want to change. I want to have an archive, and I want to exclude it from search. And this is so that visitors on the front end don't accidentally see these contact form submissions. Next, we have to choose where in the menu we want it to show. I know that 20 is for it to show below pages, so I'll enter that. But there's a link here where you can go to the WordPress codex to see what the different options are. And then here is an option to set an icon. And I know there's one called dash icons dash email dash alt. And so I'll enter that one. We'll want a title and editor, but we won't have a featured image. And it's always good to have revisions. 
Then we click the button Add Post Type. If we take a look at the edit screen, we see we have the place for the title, for the content, but there aren't any custom fields yet. So to add those, we go to the Advanced Custom Fields menu and click Add New to add a new field group. We're going to call this Contact Info and we're going to assign it to our new post type, Contact. Then we'll add the fields. We're going to add three fields. Name, for the person's name that's entered. This is the label that shows this is the slug that's used in the database, the lowercase names. And we want to remember these because we'll need them later in our form. This will be a text field and it'll be required. Then we want to add a second field for the email so that we save the email that's entered. And you can see Advanced Custom Fields has lots of field types. We're just using some basic ones here. So we'll add email and we'll mark that as required. And then we'll add the last field called department. And this is so we can send the email to the correct company department to handle it. We'll also go with text here and mark it as required. So that's it. We're going to save it now. We have our three fields. Let's go back and look again. And we see here they are, name, email, and department. So now we're ready to start creating our page with the form. So to create the page, we're going to go to Pages, Add New, and we'll give it a title. I'm going to go ahead and save it and then click Edit with Elementor. So here we are in the Elementor editor. I'm going to add a one column row. I'm going to start by giving it a little bit of space at the top here so we're not right up against the top of the page. And then I'm going to add a heading, say Contact Us, and then I'm going to add another section and in here we'll add our form. You can see by default Elementor gives us a basic contact form with the fields name, email, and message. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a field called product. We come here, we click add item, we go to the label and we call it product. We're going to make it required this will be a select type field. And what we want to do with this field is we want to give the visitor the option to choose whether they're contacting us about the light version of the plugin or the pro version. And so we'll add our options for the select field. And then we're going to move this to the top. And as we move it over here, we can see it's moved over up there. Okay, next we want to add another field and this will be for department. We'll give it the label department. This will also be a select field that's required and we'll enter the values for this select field. And now we're going to move this one to be up above the message field. So let's take a look at our new fields and there's some things that we want to do here. One is we want to go in and make sure that they have a good field ID that matches the slug in the advanced custom field. So we want to make sure it has a good slug ID rather than the default. So it makes it easier to refer to later. So product, let's check the others that were added. Department, okay, let's fix that. Good. So we've got our fields. The first one of our challenges here is we want to only show the fields of this form when people are asking about the pro version of the plugin. So let's start by dragging in a text field and we'll give them a message with some instructions. So to set the dynamic display conditions, we go back to edit the form and then go down the form fields and add a condition. There are three choices here, always visible, show if, and hide if. We want show if, we'll have to do multiple conditions. The field ID product equals to awesome plugin pro. And that's it. Now we do the same thing for the other fields. Go to condition, show if, field ID product equals to awesome plugin pro, department, condition, show if, Product equals awesome plugin pro. Condition, show if. Product equals awesome plugin pro. And now we need to do the same for the submit button. There's a display mode option. 
always visible, show if, hide if. And so we want to do the same thing. But here, instead of no field, we want product equals to Awesome Plugin Pro. Now, if we've done that correctly, we should be able to test it and have it work the way we want. So let's click Update and now preview the changes. OK, that's great. We, we just see now the drop down and the instructions. Let's try changing to the Pro and there's our form. OK, so we've completed the first task. We've made the display of the form conditional on the user being interested or asking for help with the Pro version. Now let's go to the second task, and that is to direct the email based on which department the user chooses. Let's go back to the form, and this time we're going to look at actions after submit. By default, the action is to email the site admin, but that's not what we want, so we're going to remove the default action, and we're going to add dynamic email. When we do that, another accordion is shown, and here we can start adding email options. The first thing we need to do is add a condition. And there's a glitch that shows up sometimes where no results show here. There should be a drop down of the fields. And I found a workaround for that is to go back to the form fields and go to the one you're interested in and just view it. And then go back to the dynamic email. And now it shows. So we want department. We have several conditions, whether the condition is empty, it has any value, it's less than, it's greater than, or it's equal to, which is what we want. And our first one is accounting. Then I'm going to tweak the subject and change new message for accounting department. OK, now let's add another condition. Department is equal to. And this time it's customer support. And I'll tweak this subject line. And finally, for the third department, and is equal to and sales. OK, I'm going to save. And we're going to test this out. I'll fill in the form. And this first one I'll try sending to customer support and click the send button. And it didn't work. Let's check the dynamic email settings. Ha! Huh, I forgot to change the to field. So this is accounting at awesome.com. And then for customer support, this will be customer support at awesome.com and for sales it will be sales at awesome.com let's see if it works now we'll go back and preview our change and fill out the form again customer support click send let's take a look at the email ah Good. This time it's going to customer support. We have our custom subject. And here are the form fields. OK, so we've completed now the second task, which is to send the emails to the correct department. Now let's work on the third task and save the values to the database. There is a, another option in Actions After Submit. This is also added by Dynamic Content for Elementor. When we add this, we get an additional accordion option. Here we have save fields to the post, to the user, or to a category. And we want to save them to our custom post. So we'll do post. And then the post title is form entry by field ID equals name. So that's the person's name here. So I'm going to change this field entry from the name. And then add four and add another field, which will be then field ID equals department. OK. And then so that's going to be the post title. And then the post content will be the message, which is what we want. We want it to save to our contacts post type. 
All right, so if we've done this right, it should now work. We did all the difficult work earlier when we created the custom post type. So let's save and go test again. We will fill in the form. This time we'll email sales, click send. And now let's go look in the database and see under contacts. Wow, here it is. Let's take a look. Form entry for the name for the department, the message, and then our custom fields got saved. Wow, so we did the third task also. Now we've saved the form submissions to the database. If you wanted to, you might continue this process and actually create some pages to show the different departments the form submissions. And if you want to do something like that, I have a tutorial on Elementor360.com using dynamic content for Elementor to create templates for the single and the archive display of a custom post type. And so this tutorial might help you if you want to continue this process. So in this tutorial, we use custom post type UI and advanced custom fields to add a custom post type and custom fields to hold our form submissions. Then we use dynamic content for Elementor to dynamically show form fields, to dynamically pick the email address based on user selection, and to save the form to the database. I found using the dynamic content for Elementor form extensions fairly easy to use and noticed that the documentation has been improved so that there was enough to point me in the right direction. The only issue I ran into is that glitch where the drop down condition field for the dynamic email didn't always populate the first time. The form extensions provided by Dynamic Content for Elementor are useful and make it possible to add more advanced features to your website. The save feature itself is very powerful and allows you to use Elementor Pro to create front end forms for user submissions. Often people have to resort to another plugin to achieve that, but with Dynamic Content for Elementor, you can use your favorite page builder. The full text version of this article is available on the Elementor360.com website, and there you will also find other tutorials, resources, and news about Elementor. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.